warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, everyone, let's dive into something that's at the heart of so many of our lives. Are we putting too much emphasis on the superficial when it comes to finding a partner? We live in a world that's constantly telling us to never settle and keep your standards high. But here's the thing. How do we know if our standards are actually helping us find lasting love or if they are just keeping us from what truly matters? I'm Sister Fatima Farooqi and it's a pleasure to be your host today. I'm part of Pure Matrimony, the largest matrimonial platform for practicing single Muslims. We've had the honor of helping thousands of Muslims find their perfect match, all in a way that aligns with our beautiful deen. But let me tell you, along this journey, I've heard so many stories that made me question what we mean when we talk about standards. It's easy to get caught up in the idea of perfection, isn't it? We all have that mental checklist, someone who ticks every box, right? But what if I told you that sometimes the things we think are so important might actually be the very things holding us back from a successful relationship? Let me share a story that really moved me. It's from the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's one of those stories that just stays with you. There was a woman named Barira. She was a slave who had been freed and once she was free, she had the choice to stay married to her husband Mughid, who was also a slave, or to leave him. Now here's the thing, Mughid was madly in love with Barira, but she didn't feel the same way. So she decided to leave him. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrated that Mughid would follow Barira around crying so hard that his tears soaked his beard. The Prophet wasallam gently asked Barira, why don't you go back to him? But when she asked if it was a command, he simply replied, I'm just trying to intervene on his behalf. Barira chose to move on. And the Prophet ﷺ respected her decision. Now, here's what strikes me about this story. It's all about compromise. Or the lack of it. Barira had every right to make her choice and she did. But what resonates with me is Mugit's love and the Prophet's gentle advice. Mugit was willing to compromise but Barira wasn't. And both choices were respected. Fast forward to today and this situation feels all too familiar, doesn't it? How many times have we seen sincere people, maybe they don't have a flashy job or drive the latest car, but they're full of deen and sincerity. They get overlooked because they don't fit into some worldly mold. It's heartbreaking to watch and it says a lot about the pressures we face in society today. We are bombarded with messages telling us to prioritize beauty, wealth, and status. And sure, those things can have their place. But should they really be at the top of our list? The Prophet Muhammad gave us a different perspective when he said, The most blessed marriage is the one with the least expenses. Think about that. It's not about how grand the wedding is how huge the mahar is, or how perfect the spouse seems. It's about simplicity, sincerity, and the intention behind the union. And here's another hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. If someone proposes marriage to you whose religion and character satisfies you, then you should accept it. If you do not, there will be trials on the earth and the spread of corruption. So ask yourself, Are your standards truly reflective of what Islam teaches us to value? Or are they more influenced by societal pressures and fleeting desires? I've seen people who were so sure they knew what they wanted, whether it was beauty, wealth or something else, only to find out later that they were chasing the wrong thing. Like the brother who was captivated by a woman's beauty, only to have it led to arrogance and a broken marriage or the one who thought wealth would bring her comfort, only to have it cause more pain than she could have imagined. It's tough, right? But here's the silver lining. These experiences, as painful as they are, can be powerful lessons, if you are willing to learn from them. 
It's about focusing on what truly matters, character and theme. Once those are in place, everything else becomes secondary. And trust me, it's not easy. It takes a lot of soul searching, a lot of dua, a lot of trust in Allah's plan. But once you get there, everything changes. I've seen so many people find peace and contentment by shifting their focus to what really matters in a marriage. And I want that for you too. I want you to experience the beauty and tranquility that comes from marrying someone whose character and deen shine above everything else. Because at the end of the day, that's what will carry you through the ups and downs of life. Let me share another story from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam that illustrates this perfectly. There was a companion named Jabir ibn Abdullah. He was a young man who had just lost his father in a battle and was left to care for his seven sisters. When it came time for Jabir to marry, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, Did you marry a young woman or an older one? Jabir responded that he married an older woman because he didn't want to bring a young girl into his home who wouldn't know how to care for his sisters. The Prophet ﷺ didn't rebuke him for his choice. Instead, he understood Jabir's reasoning and appreciated the wisdom behind his decision. This story shows us that Jabir didn't just focus on his own desires or societal expectations. He made a compromise. But he did it with wisdom and for a greater good. In our times, we hear people saying, don't compromise. Keep your standards high. And while that's good advice in some situations, it's important to remember what our standards are based on. If they are purely based on worldly criteria, like beauty, wealth or lineage, then we might miss out on what truly matters. The Prophet ﷺ said, a woman is married for four things, her wealth, her lineage, her beauty and her religion. So marry the one who is religious and you will prosper. This hadith doesn't miss the importance of wealth, beauty or lineage, rather it puts them in context. These things can be important, but they shouldn't overshadow the character and deen of a person. So when we talk about compromise, it's not about settling for less in terms of deen and character, never that. But if someone's deen is strong, their character is sound, then other factors become secondary. In the end, it's about prioritizing what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, have taught us to prioritize. It's about recognizing that no one is perfect and that sometimes the best matches are those where both parties are willing to compromise on the less important things for the sake of Allah. So take a moment to reflect on what truly matters to you. Are you focusing on the right things? Are your standards aligned with the values that Islam teaches us to hold dear? These are questions you need to give a thought about. At Pure Matrimony, we encourage you to keep your standards high, especially when it comes to deen and character. But we also remind you that life is about balance, wisdom and sometimes the art of compromise. And in that compromise, there is great beauty and blessing, inshallah. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I hope this episode has sparked some thoughts and maybe even a shift in how you view the journey to finding your other half. At Pure Matrimony, we are committed to helping you find a partner who enriches your life in the ways that matter most, both in this life and the next. So as you go about your week, think about what really counts when it comes to love and marriage. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. We are here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, take care of yourself, stay true to what Islam teaches us, and keep your heart open to the possibilities. This is Sister Fatima Farooqi signing off. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayatu bi nuri huda